Good morning. Hello, hello everyone. My name is Melanesia and this is Just Homesteading. We are canning chicken today. Um, I bought a bunch of chicken breasts the other day. Um, was it just under 30 pounds? And I'm canning slightly less than that because I am using some of the chicken breasts for dinner tonight. Um, so, you know, I keep most of my chicken in the in our deep freezers in the basement, but I do like to keep some canned chicken on hand. Um, you know, if you're new here, I have four children, I work full time. So having canned chicken on hand makes cooking on our extra busy days really easy. Um, I use the canned chicken for things like omelets for breakfast in the morning, um, chicken fried rice, um, pasta dishes where I can just throw chicken in there, um, chicken enchiladas, things like that. Um, so I really do like to have chicken, um, canned chicken on hand. I love to keep some of it on our shelves down in the root cellar. So I'm just gonna walk you through um, canning chicken. So I've already cut it up. Um, I got up early and did that. I like to um, get my chicken cut up while my children are sleeping so that way I don't have to worry about, um, you know, getting chicken in places that it shouldn't be. Um, so I got up before my kids woke up, cut it up. Um, so it's actually ready to go. I need to get my canners turned on. Um, I don't actually know how many jars I'm going to get, but I did bring up both of my pressure canners and fill them both with um, seven jars because that's how much my, that's how many quart jars my pressure canners hold. So I'm going to turn my camera around, show you the supplies that I'm going to be using, and then I'm just gonna get right into this because I have a lot of other things to do today. Laundry, um, it's wash day for um, my hair and my 18 month old hair. Um, and you can hear him in the background. He found, uh, he, he grabbed a bag of chips out of the cabinet that um, he can't actually eat, um, although he's asking for it. So um, let me turn this camera around. Okay, so these are the supplies that I need. This is my pressure canner. Um, and as you can see, it holds seven quart jars. I don't have a lot of wide mouth canning jars, so I like to save these for things like meat. Um, if you've ever raw packed chicken, which is the process that I'm going to follow today, um, the jars can get, um, it's like, I think it's the fat from the chicken and it really gets stuck to the jars. So using the wide mouth makes it a lot easier to clean the jars after you take the chicken out. Um, and it also makes it easier to get the chicken itself out of the jars. So I do my best to save my wide mouth canning jars for um, my canned chicken and anything that it would make it easier to have the wide mouth on. I have my wide mouth canning lids that I'm going to use today, my wide mouth rings, um, I have a funnel, a plate. Since I'm doing raw pack method, I don't actually need to have, um, you know, a spoon or anything like that. I'm just going to throw a glove on and throw the chicken in the jar. Um, and then I also have my bowl of chicken here. So the cubes are about um, one inch to maybe one and a half inches in size. That's what I like. It's perfect for when I need to use it. I have my, my jar grabber and I need to grab my paper towel with water and vinegar on it. So chicken is low acid, which means it needs to be pressure canned. All low acid foods need to be pressure canned so that way it stays at the right temperature for the right amount of time to ensure that your food is safe from um, botulism. So for quart jars, um, I'm gonna double check the recipe, but I do believe that I fill these to um, one and a quarter inch headspace, and then um, and then I will pressure can these for 90 minutes. I need to put three quarts of water 
into my pressure canner. Um, pressure canning is different than water bath canning and water bath canning, you would have to ensure that your water covers the jars. It's the complete opposite for pressure canning. For pressure canning, you need to follow the instructions for your specific canner. I'm using Presto canners today and they require three quarts of water in there. No more, um, no more than that. So, and the water level will rise, but normally um, it does not cover the jars. And you don't want the water covering the jars because it impacts the canner's ability to come up to the right temperature and to remain at the same temperature. So let's get these jars filled up and, um, and we're gonna get these onto the stove. Okay, so I have two of my jars here. I'm going to fill the jars with my chicken cubes that I have already cut up. So with raw packed chicken, you do not add any liquid. And I don't know what my baby is doing over there, uh, but hopefully you can hear me. Yeah, so raw packed chicken, you don't add any liquid. And so you just fill it in and the chicken will create its own juice. Um, for most of the chicken that I've canned, it never creates enough juice to actually um, cover the chicken. So it doesn't look as nice as hot um, packed chicken, but it tastes fine. And I actually prefer the taste to the raw packed chicken, which is why I do it this way. Because with hot pack chicken, you would actually need to cover the chicken with liquid to the appropriate headspace. Okay, so I'm gonna fill, it says to loosely fill the jars. So that's what I've done here. So I'm going to fill the rest of the jars and get the lids on. Okay, so I'm just wiping my rim with a wet paper towel. This paper towel has water and vinegar on it. You can use just water, but I've found that using a vinegar ensures that anything that may have gotten on the rim um, is cleaned off. Then I'm going to add my lid and my ring. And you twist that ring just until it's fingertip tight. Then after that, it goes into the canner. Okay, and this is what a full canner looks like. I still have a good amount of chicken left, so I'm going to go ahead and get my second pressure canner prepped so I can do hopefully another seven quart jars. So I have all of my jars filled. I ended up with 12 quart jars and one pint jar. So I am using both of my pressure canners. Um, the larger one does have a pint jar in there. So when you are canning and you are using different size jars, um, you always can for the time for the largest jar so even though there's a pint jar in here everything will be canned at quart jar times um, this way everything is processed for the correct amount of time and all of your food will be safe and as I said before none of these have liquid in them so I'm going to get the lids on um, turn my burners up to high once they get high enough, the pressure canners will start to vent and um, you let them vent for 10 minutes and after 10 minutes, you will put the weight on. So let me get these lids on here and then I will show you the next step. Okay, so I am down in my root cellar right now, frantically looking for my second weight for my pressure canner. So I normally keep my weights to my pressure canners either on the canner themselves or in a drawer in the kitchen. 
um, for whatever reason, I can only find one. So this is a reminder for myself to make sure that I have everything I need before I start canning. Um, so hopefully I can figure out where this weight is because I cannot use my pressure canners without the weight. Um, based on my altitude, I use a 15 pound weight and I need this to pressure can. So my pressure canners are on the stove. They're coming up to temperature. So I have until um, that time to figure out where this weight is at. So wish me luck. Okay, I found my second weight. It was actually in my baking drawer in the kitchen versus the drawer that I would normally put it in. So we have two weights and we are ready to go. We're just waiting for my pressure canners to come up to temperature and then after they vent for 10 minutes, I will put these weights on. So this is what you want to see before you start your timer for your 10 minute vent. You want a nice consistent stream coming out of your camera. It's been 10 minutes, so I am going to put my weight on. So you just put it on and then it will start to rock. And I prefer the weight over the dial gauge because the dial gauge on this canner um, is not accurate. The weight, which is 15 pounds, so when it starts rocking, the the needle should be, ooh, I burned myself. The needle should be here, but it's actually at 20. Um, so it's not accurate and I would need to take it to my local extension office to be um, serviced. This one, doesn't actually have a dial gauge because it's the smaller version. Okay, so once these start rocking, I can start my 90 minute timer. The on my larger pressure canner has started to rock, which means it is at 15 pounds of pressure. And I'm just looking at this weight, it actually needs a really good scrub, so I will take care of that once I'm done using it. And as you can see, it's at 15 pounds pressure, um, but look where the, where the needle is. So since it's up to pressure, I can actually start to slowly turn my heat down. And I have found that the six, the number six on my knob is the sweet spot. So I'll turn it down a little bit, wait another minute or two, and then turn it down again. But I'm gonna set my timer for um, 90 minutes and as you can hear in the background I have a little one that I need to tend to. Okay so I just took my jars out of the pressure canners and as you can see they are still actively bubbling. Um, these will sit on the counter for the next 24 hours and then I will check the seals. But it does look like some of the jars have already sealed um, but I'm not going to touch them. So it takes about maybe an hour or so before you can actually pull the jars out of the pressure canners. You have to let the pressure come down on its own. And then you take off the weight and then you wait an additional maybe 10 to 15 minutes and then you can take off the lids and wait another 10 or so minutes and then you can actually pull the jars out of the pressure canner. And doing that helps prevent siphoning in your jars. But as you can see, most of them, the liquid does not cover all of the chicken. Um, and that's just because chicken nowadays is leaner than chicken before. Um, but they're, as long as they seal, they're still considered safe. That is it. I am going to let these jars sit, check the seal, and then I will post a final picture on my Instagram at just underscore homesteading. So as always, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.